He's the king of socks. Come over here. Just put your foot in there. Well, listen. Look at this. Look at this. Chicken. Is that like a chicken? <laughs> Is that a chicken? No chicken was harmed in the making oh of the socks. Oh my God. God. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with B.O. Buzz Weekly. You guys, you know there's a lot of ways to tell a story. You can tell it with words and images. Our guest tells it with objects. You see his work all over the place, you just don't know it's him. On shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and on Tarantino's latest epic adventure, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He's amazing. He is my cousin. I'm super proud to say that. He is the awesome prop master, Chris Call. We're getting buzzed. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. Welcome! Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and we have a studio audience yes. here today, so that's pretty cool. It's a family um, no affair. No hecklers, no hecklers. No. Um, <laughs> it's a family affair. We love I have it. to say, because yeah. you just said that you're super proud. Dude? Yeah. She Super talks fun. about you like every single day, no matter where we go. She's like, oh, my cousin did that. Nice. <laughs> so you have a, a a family member fan mm -hmm. who just loves your work. Yes. Wow. I sat That's... through the, um, as I call it, the juicy parts because I was like, oh, oh I, I know. See it. Fortunately, ah. there weren't too yeah. many. Yeah. Too juicy. Yeah. Well, for I Tarantino mean, for her, for I mean, me, it's yeah, even Disney I, movies are, are kind of tough for <laughs> Stacey. Animals get hurt. Because <laughs> animals very get hurt. That's right. Yeah. Babies in distress. This, this it's was not good. borderline like death right. for her. Trauma. Um, but it was worth it. So um, cool. We're so happy to have you here because we on this show, we like to celebrate and highlight patterns and behaviors of successful people. And you know, there's and that's what you are, right? Yeah. Apparently, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what they tell me. And <laughs> <laughs> the word on the street. The word on the um, street. But we we have never had a prop master on the show. Wow. Um, this is very exciting. Yeah. So you can set the bar. I well, know. For all. Not only that, I, I look at things sometimes in a way that you know it doesn't matter really what you do, but if you become successful mm. doing something <clears> that is <throat> actually not that easy to become successful at. For example, you know, voiceover is tough. You really gotta know the right people, right. do the right things, and get to the point where your skills take you to a certain level. And with you and what you do, which we don't really know exactly how you get to the point of where you're at. Sure. So let's start with that. As a prop master, well, first of all, for the people that don't exactly know what exactly that is. What, what is a prop you? master? What are you, what do you do? Well, a prop master, I mean, in a very technical level, it is what, uh, all the what the actors touch and hold and carry, but beyond that, it's more about the objects in a character's life. I mean, because we all in our life we have objects that we interact with all the time, whether it's our glasses or our watch that we wear, or our cell phone and our cell phone cover, and these are all things that uh, speak to our character. I mean, we spend a lot of time picking out the things that we have True. and that we mm -hmm. own, and because they represent who we are, and so. For me, that's the beauty and the fun of doing props is being able to work with the director and the writer and then ultimately the actor to figure out how to help define their character. Wow. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, a lot of people, they think props, you know, you just, yeah, a coffee cup, here, here's a coffee cup. Yeah. But if it's a, a, a wrong coffee cup, it might take you out of the scene. Mm -hmm. It might yeah. not. Some people may not look at it at all, but there are a lot of people who, especially actors, who really... Uh, appreciate that. So, um, curiosity, collaboration, those are clutch for your for your job. Yes, absolutely. So, what other skill sets do you think and personality traits really have to be ingrained in a prop master? Well, again, I think um, adaptability is key mm -hmm. because things change constantly, um, whether it's in preparation or on set. Uh, a lot of times um, things happen and we have to be able to move quickly. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to let go of whatever it was that you were doing and shift gears and and move forward and with a good attitude. There um, you go. <laughs> so that's key. Yeah. Uh, but that's key to any any department in film making. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is such a tight collaborative effort that if everybody's not willing to just stay fluid and uh, and adapt to what's happening, um, it could be a big problem. So I think that's like the number one mm -hmm. trait for being in the industry in, and in does, general. Does yeah. that happen a lot? It does, it happens all the time, every single day. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and then for me, for props, it's also just being handy, handy with uh, with, um, with tools and um, and artistically, because mm -hmm. again, we're we are also props is the uh, last person from the art department who's on set, so the production designer will design the whole. Uh, sh uh, movie or TV show or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the set decorator will come in with their crew and they'll decorate everything, and then they turn it over, and the yeah. prop master becomes the head so, of. So yeah, yeah, is a couch prop or is that the more couch set? is definitely set dressing. Okay, um, but uh, we have on set dressers now too, which is great because it helps us. So this is prop mm -hmm. master. That's prop master because you're about to touch it. And this, so that table is sets. Ah, unless somebody gets thrown, unless today. somebody gets thrown True, through yes. it, and then unless it becomes it, a prop. It, it looks like I see. Around, yes. I see. If it doesn't yeah. move, if it's, it doesn't it's move. Set. If you touch it, I mean, it, but it's you prop. And you could arguably say a, like a, a side yeah. chair. Yeah. Like it touched if the you floor. touch the chair, yeah. but but if it's part of the design of the set, then it becomes it's this set. This is like a new fun party game. Wow, prop right? Or props set. or props sets, right? exactly, exactly. Or not? Yeah, I don't think it has rules picking that one up. Um, so what? Okay, so you want to be a filmmaker, you go to film school. Mm. You want to be a prop master, you go to... Prop school. No, <laughs> prop <I'm>... school! <laughs> I mean, how does one become... Well, you know, I mean, I, 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 somebody has asked me that before. I recently got a question which was, when you were a child, did you always want to be a prop master? It's like, I had no idea what a prop master was. Like most people right. don't yeah. know what a prop right. master is. If they see it in the credit, they're like, what's that? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, people don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was. Um, I I came into the film industry as a production assistant. I came in at the ground level. Mm -hmm. I had an interest in it. I was artistic by nature, went to art school for a little while. Um, so I started working as an art department P PA, and then I actually worked in the set dressing department for a while, and I just kind of evolved into that. Um, again, I think, being on set and being a prop master, you're in the you're in the hot seat a yeah. lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. you live or die by how you perform on set. And I and back in the day, I really liked that a lot. You know, mm -hmm. because you're right there. And I'm a kind of a can do kind of guy. You know, I'm like a, a problem solver. You know, so yes. again, the prop master, a lot of that stuff falls on us. You know, mm -hmm. when like if something doesn't work or something's not right, they'll ask us. You know, can you help us here? Can hey, you fix this? Or what can we do? Why here? did you break that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why when in props we have the saying, um, "One is none." Yeah. Mm. Because if you have one coffee cup, right. and the actor goes to put it on the coffee table and it drops and Oops. smashes, then you're, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah. You, you have Rookie to be able to keep move, moving. Man. So Absolutely. basically, there's you have always, the hero cup, but then you have like yeah, 47 yeah. other. Is there, there's always a backup for the backup. There's yeah. always a backup, and uh, and hopefully a backup for the backup. Now, like on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, yeah, that's all period 1969. Yeah. So Man. you know, you find a bitch in real to real tape recorder, then it's like that's nice. Where's the next one? There is no backup. Okay, and right. then when you have Leo DiCaprio in a pool on a lounge chair. With the tape recorder, you need another one right. as well. You yes. know, so wow. that was yes. the challenge on that show was finding all of these great props, but then finding doubles and triples right. on them right. as well. Yeah. And working. Didn't you tell us that there was one specific scene mm -hmm. in uh, Once, upon, uh, Once a upon a Time in Hollywood where there was a particular prop that you were trying to replicate for that time, but the director oh, said, I don't care about that. Let's use that because I really like it. There yeah. was so Quentin really wanted a scene in uh, Spawn Ranch in George Spawn's house when, right. when Which Cliff was a comes in. Awesome, yeah. Right I love when he all walks that. in that house and you see, I mean, again, Nancy Haig, the decorator, did an incredible she job did. She mm -hmm. did. decorating that set. He wanted, you know, to uh, as a um, an emotional point for Cliff to look over and see a rat in a trap. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay fighting for its life you know, yeah. because it's Which, symbolic. Which, by the way, when I saw that, I was oh. like... <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I yeah, but it, I mean, was, it was effective. It yes, and it was something that meant something a lot to Quentin because he actually had them build a mechanical rat for yes. that one shot. Yeah. Okay, so it was big for him. So No rats were harmed. No real rats were harmed, exactly. So I immediately, of course, went out and you know found a rat trap 
period for the time, which is the, you know, yeah. the Tom and Jerry rat yeah. trap. Yeah. And uh, showed it to me, he goes, no, 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 it, it needs to be a glue trap. I'm like, hmm, okay, fine. And then I went on my uh, computer and, glue and started did not come looking. come out until 1989. <laughs> 1986, <laughs> no. to be exact. Um, <laughs> that was a good year. You were I close. That was pretty good. <laughs> this is awesome. So, yeah, so Here's I'm looking. Your and, no. <laughs> and so I said, Clinton, you know, I, I hate to tell you this, but the glue trap didn't come out until 1986. It wasn't even invented till 1984 or something like that. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's okay. I don't care. I really want him to be in a glue trap. So my challenge then became, how do I, you know, bridge the gap between what's real and and, and what's authentic, right. yeah, or what's authentic and you know what the and, director and wants. The vision, yeah. So in my mind, what I decided was is that George Spawn invented the first rat trap, glue trap. There you okay, go. Like, who knows that? Because, it, but the, who he knew that? Have. But who and, knows that? And maybe he could have. I mean, my grandfather, as far as I know. Uh, invented the first electric lawnmower because he took a, a motor from a, a pool pump mm -hmm. and turned it upside down and put it on a chassis and then uh, took a, a metal blade and sharpened it and put a handle on it and made himself a, 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 an electric lawnmower in like 1965. Did he? This is true. You're not making yeah. this is absolutely true. Yeah. Wow. So in my mind, I thought, okay, so all the rat traps I could find are plastic with the glue on them. I'm like, yeah. so there's no way they would have plastic then. So what I did is I built a little wooden frame for it and put the glue trap in the frame. Mm -hmm. And I, and that satisfied me. As and you got the best yeah. of both worlds. And I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. And uh, he really cool, liked it. Yeah. And it lived, but and, and that speaks sold. for you by saying, hey, listen, man, when something has to get done, you do whatever you need to do that's, to get it done, but still right. have it look the way you think it right. needs to look as well. Exactly. That's cool. I think it's conscientiousness. Yes. Um, so that is something that, I mean, I think that is a, a trait across the board of your life is you're very conscientious. You don't just sort of kind of right. show up, kind of, yeah. you're either all in or you're all the way out, right? Yes. I mean, that's what I strive for anyway. I mean, because uh, I'm not going to be the guy who calls it in. That's really against my nature. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do believe that that's why I'm as successful as I am is because people appreciate that. People appreciate mm -hmm. yeah. excellence, okay? Because yeah. it's hard to find. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just lucky that that's like my nature Yeah. because I have to deal with this a lot of times like with my crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My crew, they just kind of sometimes, not my current crew, but crews in the past that would just want to call it in or whatever, get, you yeah, know, just do the job, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, that's not what I yeah. want, you know? Yeah. Are, are there a lot of prop masters i mean i you know i i want to say i know there's, there's a lot not of directors, a huge amount of right. prop masters i'd say there's probably in the order of maybe 300 oh okay so there's significant amounts of well them. there's a lot of production because, out there now. Saying, yeah exactly you know? so mm -hmm. so if you're working on because you can only work on so many shows at one time right you can only work on one show at one time if you you know if you're gonna do it right oh uh, i've wow. tried to double up before on tv shows and it's impossible just meetings alone yeah. Right. will take most of your time. Right. So uh, I I know that uh, costume designers can do it. Yeah. Um, and there's some other people uh, that can do it, but um, props, there's just no way. Yeah, okay. because for example, like you're on Brooklyn Nine-Nine right now. Yes. Um, congrats on the renewal. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yes. Nine -nine. Um, please tell me Terry Crews is as nice as he seems. He is the best. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, for real. He it's like we could all wish we could be as great as Terry Crews. So Such a sweet... Sweet guy. I love that. I love that. So, like on a show like Brooklyn Nine Nine, I mean the characters are evolving, the storyline is evolving. So, can you take us through? Because I think obviously, an episodic comedy versus episodic drama, the process, the timelines are different, right? Yes. So, for example, like on a Brooklyn Nine Nine, what what's your schedule like for that? For, oh wow! Well, like okay, how so do you get he's like this could be a long one, ladies <laughs> well, and gentlemen. Well, I mean, uh, a, a half-hour comedy is usually shot over five days, okay. and we usually have five days to prep it. Um, having said that, you know, in the way we do it, like what's different between features and television is, is that in features, everybody preps at the same time. You prep for you know anywhere from seven weeks to twelve months, depending on how big the the show is, and then you go to camera with it and you film and everybody comes along. With television, you film, you prep an episode and then it goes to camera. And while you're filming, you're prepping the next episode. Right. 
Okay. So mm -hmm. everything just keeps moving. So there's a whole uh, set crew and then there's a prep crew. So I have guys who run the set for me, which I don't on a film. Um, and they're the ones who are there. So I turn over the props to them and they're the ones who are actually doing the, mm -hmm. the work on camera on a day-to-day -day basis while I'm prepping the next episode. So I'm always one step ahead of the shooting crew. So on a, a five-day episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we will, we're normally supposed to get a script on Monday mm -hmm. and then like have a concept meeting maybe on Tuesday and then have department head meetings on Wednesday and then on Thursday you have a production meeting and then on Friday they do a tone meeting and then you go to camera on Monday. So on the show like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and what I found about comedy in general is, is that everything's about the joke. Mm. Yes. Okay, so the jokes are changing all the time. And sometimes they will even write scripts that have all alternative um, takes in it, um, you know, different jokes for the same scene. And so right. when they're filming it, they'll shoot one way and then they'll do the next joke. And then they figure it all out in the editing. Right. So on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we don't often get a script until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we usually have about three days to start getting stuff out. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we're we're shooting for having stuff ready for Monday and Tuesday, knowing that we have a couple extra days. And, you know, it's just this constantly moving train yeah, yeah. that the first season on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is my first time doing half hour comedy, I thought I was oh, wow. going to lose my <laughs> mind because, again, I'm like Johnny on the spot. It's like script. Sure. Boom. Knock it all off by yeah. Wednesday. And then all the revisions come in. It's like everything what? you just You're did. Like, what? Get it out of here because yes. it's all new. Yes. And so we have to just, you know, move and change and and sometimes it's big stuff. I mean, but like on a show like Brooklyn Nine Nine, they're really great. The writers are great. Dan Gore, the creator of the show. Yeah. Um, they're really good. I mean, he's a lover of props too. I have to give him a shout out yes. because he really loves props. So that helps a lot. Yeah. Um, but he will say, Hey, listen, we're gonna do a robot, a police robot in the next episode. So give you a little bit more heads up than mm -hmm. three days to Yeah, make so you have stuff to go happen. find a robot so or to, build a robot. Build a robot. In this case it was robot. build a robot. Oh my yeah. god. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but see, and that that's the part of the MacGyver part that comes in because, exactly. because yes. again, it's like I'm not gonna build a robot from the ground up in three days or five days even. So I have to like find different pieces and put them all together. So I right. found a, a a traction, a remote track uh, wheels. And then I used, I think a, a, it was a, 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 a humidifier <laughs> for the course. bottom part. And then the top part was the Dyson um, air mover. Oh my gosh. Are and you then, serious? Yeah. So creative. And then we just I like added lights and put all these different pieces That's together. That's pretty creative, it was, man. It, I was really impressed with that for myself. Yeah. You know, we, well, they must have freed too yeah. when they yeah. saw yeah. it, right? But like, you know, they're for, all like, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, say for example, you know, you were on the show Alias, yes. right? And then you skip forward couple couple years and here you are like technology mm. how has that either helped or maybe hindered your right. process okay well again I'll, I, I keep doing this and I probably should not do it all the time but I keep doing it because it's so true I have to my big shout out is to Amazon <laughs> <laughs> okay, because wait a minute, back do we have in, an affiliate link? Wait. I'm sorry, but back in the day, hey, everything we got. Has, yes, no, hey, we listen. had to go uh, out. Please to tell a me you store. at least own stock. I, I should, <laughs> for real. They should uh, definitely give me a wing or something yeah. in a facility after me. Yeah. But uh, no, it's great because I mean, there are often times where I'll be in a meeting. And I'm under the table with my phone and they're talking about something and I'm ordering it on Amazon right. and it shows up the next day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes I feel bad about that. I think, you know what? That's just lazy. I should go out and like look for stuff. And then I go to the store to look for it. And, and you can't they, find they don't it. have it. Or if they do, they have one. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and I you just need spent two. half a day traveling all around town trying to right. find something right. I could do in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that's, table. that's, a, it's, it's helped so in that that's way. That's helped a lot. Yeah. Um, but even back in the day on Brooklyn or on the uh, alias, I, that was like a kind of like a hallmark of what I did was instead of building things from the ground up, find existing mm -hmm. things and modify them mm -hmm. in certain ways. Yeah. And Cause that show was really cool because it, it was really techy yes. for its time. It was like, Absolutely. oh my gosh, what yeah. is that? Yeah. And and now, I mean, you kind of look at stuff like that and you go like, oh, that's so funny. That was, yes. But 
I mean, it had to, it, you know, it had to work and the lights had to right. come on and the well, stuff that, had to move. That's a and... good point was the lights. Okay. That was a thing back in the day because now I could build something and it could be just a piece of plastic and they could add all that stuff in post, uh -huh. all this visual effects to make the, all the right. screens and the whole nine yards. But back in the day on Alias, you know, we had to put the lights in. You know, but that was the thing with JJ where he's, he mm -hmm. didn't like a lot of flashy, blinky lights. You know, that was a thing yeah. for him. He's like, you know, I don't want to see a lot of flashy lights, but, you know, lights that made sense, he would uh, agree to. But, yeah. but again, it, the funny thing about Alias was is that after a while, they would, the writers would just write small black device. <laughs> You know, and then just leave it up to me to be able to, you know, figure out what it was. It. <laughs> How do you figure out what they meant by small black device? Well, because I mean, you figure out what it's supposed to do. Small I black see. device that opens a door. Oh, or, I you know, see. Or, right, right. So, you know, right. and that was fun to be able to, you know, design props that that then became the signature of the yeah. alias. Mm -hmm. Have you ever yeah. used anything from home <laughs> to actually create a prop that was needed? <laughs> that you got in trouble for using later. That I've gotten in trouble. <laughs> that you did not return in its original form. I know, I, I may or may not have taken some jewelry from my wife before. To, <laughs> right. to, and and she's she like, what happened that? to that watch? I'm like, oh. Well, yeah. she's here now, you can make it. Yeah, a what happened to that watch? Apology. That antique watch of mine. <laughs> But on the other hand, there's a lot of things I bring home from leftover yeah. from shows too that um, that we, uh, you know. Use. Yeah. Yeah. So how much how much repurposing do you get to do, or is that like a taboo thing? Um, you mean from show to show? Yeah. Uh, I try not to do that so much because we don't want it to show up. But and interestingly enough, on Brooklyn Nine Nine, Terry Crews does uh, his character eats yogurt all the time. Mm -hmm. That's like a big thing for him and his yogurt. And we created this fictitious label called Esther's Yogurt, which was the name of one of my assistant's daughter. Um, and so we created this label for it, and that's like the yogurt. Now that I'm doing this new show, mm -hmm. we have this scene where somebody's opening a yogurt. And for me, because it's NBC Universal, we already had the clearance on it is mm -hmm. one thing, but there's another part of it for me, which is I don't like when we use fictitious products sometimes in film because I think it takes people out because they don't recognize it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just the same way sometimes if you put a can of Coke in, it takes people out because they're like, oh, oh there's product, product placement. placement. Yeah. So for me, I'm trying to create this culture of prop products that you see from show to show. And, say, mm -hmm. and so it gives it a little bit more legitimacy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you know there are yogurt freaks going like, hmm, where do I get where that do I get that? yogurt? And you'll probably find you it on Amazon. No. I was going to yeah. say, uh, there may be a whole Chris Call line of products on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. You, your signature, the signature yeah. series. Can you, like, maybe tell us about some of the little tricks of the <laughs> trade that you guys might use? Like, I remember you one time telling me something about ice and I never even thought about that mm. but I'm oh. sure there's a few other tricks That's that you guys do. That's one of your do. pet peeves. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fake ice. Fake ice. So so yeah tell yeah, us a little so, bit about that. I mean that. Uh, again you, you know uh, our job in filmmaking is to make everything look natural. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's just a day in a, somebody's life but behind the scenes it's far from that okay because you know like a scene in once upon a time in Hollywood where um, Leo's character uh, Rick Dalton is having dinner with Al Pacino's character, who's an agent, even in film, or on film, it was not that long of a scene. It was maybe a five minute scene or whatever. It yeah. took us five days to film that scene. Holy wow. crap. Okay, part of that was because a lot of it got cut, a lot of that dialogue, yeah. but a lot of it is just multiple takes. I mean, we did a dolly track at 360 degrees around the table and dollied around. And mind you, it, and it's supposed to have happened over about an hour. So we had the whole dining room full of people and all of those people were eating dinner. Oh yeah. Okay, and drinking and smoking because Quentin wants everybody to smoke. It's 1969, not just hold a cigarette, but smoke the cigarette. Okay, so after every take, it's cut. We got to go back in there. We have to change the cigarette out because nobody likes to see the yes, cigarette going right? up right? and yes, down all the yes. time. And, the, and the, actually on IMDb, some people have pointed out that in that scene, Rick Dalton's drink changed three times. And it's like, that's because they cut it so many times mm. that you didn't see where he got a new drink and the waitress came and he got a, uh, she took his old drink right, away. So. Right. But again, yeah. it's one of those things where if you're watching that, you're not really you're not in the paying show attention to the words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, but like for but with ice, 
the whole idea, so people came up with fake ice because mm -hmm. what happens, ice melts. So if you're shooting a long scene, the ice melts and you gotta change it out every time and they don't like to wait. They'll wait for camera to change the, the mag on the camera all right. day long or change a lens, right. but they don't like to wait for props. <laughs> for ice. There's no, no for, ice no. waiting. Yeah. yeah. So somebody came up to, and it is a brilliant idea to have fake ice. My problem with fake ice is it sits in the bottom of the glass. It doesn't float. So if you put too much liquid in it, if you put the right amount of liquid in it, you could maybe get away with it. But if mm -hmm. you put too much liquid in it, it just doesn't look real because all the ice is down at the bottom and the the liquids to the top. Yeah. I'm fine with using it in the background for background people, but on the hero table, it's like, come on, what else are you doing? Right, yeah. right. But changing the ice. Okay. On yes, the glass. exactly. Yeah. And like and with Quentin, there's no way I would put put a piece of fake ice on camera. Yeah. So for me, I it, that's a pet peeve of mine seeing fake ice and uh and the other there's a couple other ones. One's where people have bags like a um uh, like a, a briefcase, a soft mm -hmm. briefcase, and there's nothing in it. Okay. Yes, you, oh, I know, you can I tell. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Or, my, or a heavy suitcase and yes, there's nothing exactly. in it. Like, yeah, and it's like <laughs> moving like this, right, like there's exactly. nothing in it. Yes. Uh, and then another one is coffee cups, like to-go cups. Yeah. Sometimes they, they won't, put, they won't, won't put anything in it. And they're yeah. like, doo, doo, having this discussion. Yeah. like, no, no, no. Just fill it with water or something. Put something in there. So that you there. can tell. So it, yeah. Yes. Those are like That's the good. nuances. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might I be genetic because that. that bugs me too. Right? Exactly. I, I drive my wife crazy because we'll be watching a movie. And I'm like, wait, stop. Freeze. Go back. Did you see that? The love on that drink last year. And she goes, honey, you're the only one who sees that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and all the and the other three hundred and the other three hundred prop masters. Prop masters. <laughs> oh that's my it. God, We're all that's cringing in unison. Hey, can yes. we uh, can we take a look at your socks real quick? Because yes. those are cool, man. I, I wore these for Chuck. Those cool are guitars. those are absolutely just socks. rad, Fantastic. man. Fantastic. That's I love right. That. My wife bought them for me for that's yeah. Horrible. And then I noticed Father's that uh, uh, your son that's over there. Tape. Oh, can you show those real yeah. quick? Just you come over it. here and just like <laughs> put your here. foot on here because <laughs> these are he's the king of socks. socks. Come Look. over here. Just put your foot in there. Well, listen. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Is that like a chicken? <laughs> Is that a chicken? No chicken was harmed in the making oh of the socks. Oh my god! <laughs> Talk well, about listen. props. He's got a lot of. Uh, Character socks in. Well, that and is Riley cool. Is, uh, Riley was in Once Upon a Time. That's Hollywood. correct. He was one of the Manson kids. Uh, yes. You were one of the shaking Manson his kids? fist <gasps> at Cliff as he was walking back from. Uh, Naughty Manson yes. kids. Wow. You know, come to, you, you kind of have that look, though. <laughs> he was born to it. I, I showed Quentin the picture and he's like, yeah, definitely bring yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely bring him. <laughs> Didn't even have to go through I wardrobe practice. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah. you basically, you just wore your own clothes probably. Oh, yeah. close to it for sure. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. So we, I mean, uh, still what you do, because the props become characters, yes. they become essential to the storytelling. So we were so excited that, um, especially that film and the whole team and the art direction and all that got acknowledged. Yeah, I, again, a huge shout out to Nancy Haig. Yeah. Because she's such a class act. I mean, and this she woman, is. if you IMDB her, I mean, I don't know if you noticed that when they called her to the stage, they yeah. said Nancy Haig, two-time winner and eight-time nominee. nominee. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. She's done all the Coen Brother movies and everything. Yeah. And I was honored to be able to work with her. Yeah. And then yeah. for her to give me that shout out, doesn't get any better than yeah, that. Yeah, you know what? In, in, a, in, a, in, a, well, in a situation a like that, you guys, where obviously. your mind is going yeah. a million miles a minute mm. for her to actually remember to mm. give you a props is because you must oh, uh that's a punch yeah that's what do you mean to give you props uh. <laughs> i no, meant to do that pun intended, <laughs> pun intended <laughs> after the fact <laughs> um yeah it was great no yeah that was really cool <laughs> proud yeah, moment so no and, and again it's true because props doesn't really we don't have a category with the academy or with the emmys um, yeah. We're working on that as a group to change that, to, to up our profile a little bit, yeah. which I'll throw out there to anybody who's like really wants to get a great visual of what props is all about mm -hmm. is there's a Vimeo out there mm -hmm. called Why Props Matter. Why Props yeah. Matter. Yeah, look it's at that. Great. It's, it's fantastic. It's a great video. It really yeah. inspires you. I mean, if somebody, hopefully it'll inspire people to want to do props because it's like, I don't think, because people don't look at props and think about it. 
I don't right. think yeah. at all. Right. I know I mean, you think, well, that's part right. of the set dressing, or I don't it, even know. Yeah. But I was going to say, for people that are watching, because not everyone watching our show is interested in voiceover, or they just are interested in people and their and their journeys. And so for anyone who is watching who has a creative inkling or desire, like what advice could you give to them um, for pursuing something on the <clears throat> other side of the camera and entertainment? Well, I, I, I like to, to remind people that we live in a digital age yeah. Yeah. where... I mean, if you want to be a filmmaker, make film. I mean, you mm -hmm. can make a film on your iPhone, yeah, and you cut it on your laptop, yeah. Um, but if you want to actually get into the business itself, into I mean, unfortunately, there are a couple markets now where you can go mm -hmm. around the country besides Los Angeles mm -hmm. and New York, which is Atlanta and some to some extent New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly Atlanta. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you live in Canada, you could go to. Yeah. Um, where is it? Oh. Vancouver. Thank yeah, you, Vancouver. Riley. Vancouver. Boom. Okay, so, um, but there are small markets. And again, if you're going to approach somebody in the business about being in the film industry, just come willing to do whatever they need mm -hmm. done. Right. Okay, because there's a lot of people who come in and who like, you know, they get a job as an intern or they get a job as a production assistant and, you know, they want to direct next week. Yeah. Okay, and it's just like, you know, you have to kind of pay your dues. And, mm -hmm. and prove, not in, when I say pay your dues, I don't mean like, you know, go through the gauntlet, but prove that you have what it takes to do it. Because right. yeah. right. again, being in front of the camera and being behind the camera are two different things. Not that being in front of the camera isn't difficult too, because it is, but um, there's not a lot of glamor behind the camera. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you have to be willing to, you know, do whatever it takes and show them that you can and have that aptitude of, of cooperation. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of like look at a film crew like we're a a mass unit, you know, yeah. because we all come together and we work really hard and diligently on that one specific pro task. And it takes everybody, mm -hmm. you know, working hand in hand to do it. And then it's like, okay, we got that, moving on. Yeah, you yeah. Know? and then it all over again. And all yeah. over again, shut it down, move to the next place wow. and do it again, you know. And yeah. You know, so it takes a lot of commitment. And, and, and there's so many details, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, right? I mean, yeah. you got to be like a master of not only prop, but like multitasking. Right. And, and everybody, <laughs> I mean, one, it, huh? it just makes me, uh, <laughs> I'm impressed all the time on how the collaborative effort is really what makes it happen. Yeah. Because if there's one wink link, they could shut yeah. down the whole show. Well, that concludes episode one with our good friend, Chris Call. We're going to be back next week with episode two. Check it out. Yes, we will. Thank you guys for watching. Follow all of us on social. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get with us. Leo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>